Scientists determine that DNA replication is semi-conservative. This means that when a DNA molecule replicates, an old and new strand make up the two new DNA molecules. We call the old strand the parental strand. Bacterial chromosomes have single origins of replication, so the parent strands are separated at one origin and the new nucleotides are added to both parent strands in opposite directions. Remember, nucleotides are always added in a 5' prime to 3' prime direction. The last nucleotide added will butt up against the first, and we have two new DNA molecules. But eukaryotic chromosomes have multiple origins of replication. Remember, eukaryotic chromosomes are linear, and these replication bubbles will eventually merge and produce two new linear chromosomes. So let's investigate DNA replication in detail. The DNA is really in a helix, but we will portray it in the latter diagram for simplicity. The first thing that occurs in DNA replication is the separation of the parent strands by breaking the hydrogen bonds that hold the bases together. This is accomplished by an enzyme called DNA helicase. The unzipped region directly behind the helicase is called the replication fork. This diagram just shows a portion of the replication bubble. Remember, there are many bubbles along the linear chromosome. As helicase unzips the DNA, the double helix in front of the helicase coils tighter and tighter. Topoisomerase is an enzyme that cuts and rejoins the DNA so it doesn't get too twisted. And single-stranded binding proteins hold the two strands apart so that the hydrogen bonds between the bases don't reform. The two strands of the helix that were just separated are called parent or template strands, as these will be used to synthesize the new strands. The enzyme primase initially adds a short sequence of RNA nucleotides. This must occur because the enzyme that adds DNA nucleotides, DNA polymerase 3, can only add a nucleotide to an existing nucleotide. Like this one, the primer will be replaced with DNA nucleotides later. Here's DNA polymerase 3. It is the enzyme that adds DNA nucleotides in a 5' prime to 3' prime direction to create the leading strand, which is continuously added toward the replication fork. And here's DNA polymerase 1, which will replace the primer with DNA nucleotides. One new strand has been added, but what about the other strand? Well, that one must be added a little differently. Again, primase must add the primer. And DNA polymerase 3 adds the DNA nucleotides, but it cannot add them towards the replication fork. Remember, it can only add them in a 5' prime to 3' prime direction, so it has to add them away from the replication fork. That means that this strand, called the lagging strand, must be added in segments. And even though DNA polymerase 3 adds nucleotides away from the replication fork, the next segment will be added closer to the replication fork. These segments of the lagging strand are called Okazaki fragments. DNA polymerase 1 replaces the primers with DNA nucleotides, and an enzyme called ligase joins the Okazaki fragments of the lagging strand together. It does this by forming phosphodiester bonds to connect the sugar phosphate backbones of the fragments. And this continues until the linear chromosome has been completely replicated. In reality, all those enzymes form what is called the replosome, which moves as one big unit during DNA replication. In order for this to occur, the lacking strand and its parent strand must form a loop near the replication fork so that all the enzymes of the replosome can progress in the same direction. The only reason why the two parent strands can be copied to produce two identical DNA strands is because of the base pairing rules. As long as we know one strand of the DNA molecule, we can always figure out the complementary strand. Take a look at this strand. Can you figure out what the complementary strand would be? Of course you can. And because DNA polymerase adds complementary bases per the base pairing rules, semi-conservative replication works like a charm. The parent strands are used as templates to produce two identical DNA molecules. Here's an overview of DNA replication. The DNA molecules consist of two complementary strands of DNA held together by hydrogen bonds between the bases. The strands twist around to form a double helix. During replication, the two strands of the parental DNA double helix separate. Which enzymes break those hydrogen bonds? Yes, DNA helicase. 
free nucleotides that are complementary to those in each strand are joined to make new daughter strands. Which enzyme does this? Yes, DNA polymerase 3. And what are those new daughter strands called? Yes, the leading and the lagging strands. Each parental strand and its new daughter strand form a new double helix. But we have a replication problem concerning the ends of the chromosome. The three prime ends of the parent strands are the problem. As you can see in this diagram, the leading strand is added all the way to the end by DNA polymerase 3 in a 5' prime to 3' prime direction. However, the lagging strand has to have a primer at the end for DNA polymerase 3 to add nucleotides 5' prime to 3'. Prime. The problem is that DNA polymerase 1 cannot replace the primer with DNA nucleotides as the enzyme must have existing nucleotides to form phosphodiester bonds with the 3' prime end. The primer degrades and the end of the new strand is shorter than the parent strand, and this shortening occurs each time the DNA is replicated. DNA contains the instructions for the cell. How can it just disappear? Well, because the ends of the linear chromosomes do not contain functional genes, but sections of nucleotides called telomeres. The telomeres consist of a repeated sequence containing thymine, adenine, and guanine. Telomeres protect the functional DNA as the telomere sections can shorten and no genes are damaged. But eventually, cells will divide so many times that the telomeres disappear. This means that the cells have a lifespan. Well, some cells. Other cells have an enzyme called telomerase, which can rebuild the telomeres. This enzyme has a built-in RNA nucleotide sequence that is complementary to the tag sequences of the telomere. It attaches to the 3' prime end of the chromosome and extends it by adding more DNA nucleotides. Then a primer can be added and DNA polymerase 3 can add DNA nucleotides to the complementary strand. Human gametocytes and many cancer cells have functioning telomerase. Replication seems like a complicated process, huh? It is, and therefore errors can happen. DNA polymerase mismatches a nucleotide in about every 100,000 base pairs. But it has a secret weapon. A subunit called epsilon will stop the enzyme and correct the mistake most of the time. But it cannot fix everything. So in a human's 3 billion base pairs, a mistake goes uncorrected about once every billion base pairs added. And other problems can occur. DNA can just begin to break down due to age, or become damaged by certain chemicals in UV light. UV light can form what is called thymine dimers, in which adjacent thymine bases will bind together. This forms a lump in the chromosome, and repair enzymes will excise that section of nucleotides. The correct nucleotides will be added, and the sugar phosphate backbone rejoined.